Now to the latest on the coronavirus. The winter storm that's hitting the East Coast is delaying vaccinations for thousands of people, closing vaccination sites in at least seven states. But across the country, the pace of vaccinations is starting to pick up as the U.S. works to blunt the spread of several more of those contagious, uh, more contagious new variants of the virus. So our James Longman is joining us now from London with the latest on those strains, specifically that South African variant, James. Uh, you know, a lot of people hear about this. They're, where do these come from, I think, is one of their questions. And they are really concerned about whether the vaccines are going to work. So what can you tell us about that? <laughs> Yeah, Terry, I think it's what preoccupies us all, the idea that we've finally got a vaccine, but the virus could have mutated so far away from the original one that the vac vaccines are useless. I think the first really important thing to say is the vaccines are not useless. They do seem to be combating these variants, but the variants are really, really important because the longer this virus circulates in the population, the more likely more variants come out and the further away, if you like, from the original virus uh, they are. And so there's a lot of really important work being done to try to sequence the virus to work out how many uh, of these mutations there are and try to stop them and importantly develop vaccines. And who better to ask about all this than the South Africans who are dealing with a very virulent strain, uh, which according to their analyses is now accounting for 90% of new cases of the coronavirus. And I spoke to Salim Abdul Karim. He is, if you like, South Africa's version of Dr. Fauci. And the all important question, vaccines, how to stop them? I asked him that and he had this to say, on the best kinds of vaccines to combat uh, these new variants. Have a listen. We don't fully understand why some vaccines may be efficacious against the new variant and others not. One of the factors that seems to be quite important is the level of antibodies that are generated by the vaccine. mRNA vaccines generate very high levels of antibody, comparable with the highest levels we see from natural infection. Whereas with the other vaccines, generally we see lower levels of antibody. So if you find that you now need six times more antibodies to neutralize the virus, you can imagine that those vaccines that uh, generate higher levels of immunity would generally do better. So not all vaccines are created equal. There are certain vaccines which are better at combating these variants. And that is the all important research that the big manufacturers need in order to adjust their vaccines, create those boosters and get everyone protected, guys. Absolutely. That's a really interesting look uh, at this virus, uh, this particular mutation, which could be the, the, the world's uh, understanding of it. So what can you tell us about vaccinations? The UK, where you are, US, where I am, we're doing OK. How is the race to vaccinate people playing out in the developing world? Yeah, that's right. I mean, in Britain, big pats on the back for everybody in this country. 13% currently of the, of the population has already been vaccinated. That's a huge number, huge success. But uh, uh, Professor Kareem was very quick to point out that uh, the vaccine is not going to the rest of the world quickly enough. And until everybody has the vaccine, no one uh, is really safe. A big step forward was uh, President Biden, Biden signing back up to the World Health Organization uh, on his first day in office, because that's not just about being part of some organization which understands uh, the coronavirus better. It's actually part of an organization which funds and supports COVAX, which makes sure that all these huge uh, vaccine manufacturers, Pfizer, Moderna and others, and now we've had Johnson & Johnson and Novavax as well, uh, are, are forced, if you like, or they buy huge quantities of, of vaccine for the developing world so that the richer countries don't take all the stock, which is what happened uh, mm. during the first wave. Um, and if you and if you have a listen to what he has to say, he's very, very uh, serious about the problem of the developing world going uh, unnoticed. I think for me, the part of it that is most distressing is the way in which vaccines are being unevenly distributed across the world. It really is disheartening. And it, it points to me that there isn't a real fundamental understanding that no one country can imagine that it's going to vaccinate its population and they are going to be safe if in the rest of the world the vaccine is rapidly growing and new variants are emerging because that simply is, is a recipe for disaster. We have to think about we've got to suppress viral replication across the world. 
And we're going to do so. In order to do so, we've got to make vaccines equitably available. And we already have a mechanism for that through COVAX. We've got to support that. So COVAX needs seven billion dollars to be able to do its work. It's nearly there, but he was telling me that their plan is to get about twenty percent of the developing world vaccinated by the end of twenty twenty one. It's a long, long road ahead, Terry. In a pandemic, we are literally all in this together. James London, Longman in London, thanks very much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.